to go on here is the select box because I think to me that was one thing I was requesting a long time ago the browse lookup so if, when I hit F6 <laughs> still lost. You're just in a screen view, aren't you? What's that? Oh, it's okay. Sorry. I'm in a screen. But as you, see, you notice, you got your normal uh, menu, but this has a prompt on it, and that, so I overlaid the last name, because that's where I put the prompt. You do not have to use the prompt if you don't want to, and if you don't use the prompt option, which I'll show you the, the code for this, then it, it won't um, show up there. And when you type, it says I'm going to type Smith. Yep, S M I T H. You notice it's filling in that prompt at the same time as it's drilling down. And then it, you you can now that's that's an array, you know, just like you would with the list box. And then you select it, and then when you highlight it, it bring in the results if you have it on program to do such. But I thought I'd show that to you all because that that works great for like if you didn't want to program drop downs, would be a way that you could query a file or you know something or whatever if you could stick it in an array enough value and then display it that way. So um, you know, in case anybody cares, that's uh that typing, where you can type just a bunch of letters, that's true in any Windows, and, uh, you know, the file explorer. If you're in a file explorer and the, the highlight cursor is on the top file, and way down over here you see a file that starts with PRS, you can just type PRS pretty quickly and it'll jump right there. And it does that all throughout Windows, any Microsoft product. So you, don't have, to take hands on so you don't have to use the mouse if you don't want to. You can type P, 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 and finally, you know, it goes P, every P, every P. It doesn't work that way. It's alphabetical. If you type, you know, A, L, P, H, A, you go to the file start if you pulled out. And a lot of people are quicker with that than most people can do it. Chris, when you I use the prompt parameter on this, and you're going to show it, mm -hmm. is it, it's just the X, Y for that is where the data entry field is basically going to go. That's where the label goes. As you notice here in this format, we have the array name. Half word, half word starting position of the array. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay, we have the array name. And then you have here the starting number of that array that you want these to be in, and the ending. And then th these here are the positionings that you wish to show the list box, row, column, and height, and all that. You use the minus one, as you see here, it, it centers it. That way I don't, you don't have to try to figure out calculation wise, you know, where's the center of all this. This, this here, the last name, that's the prompt. Now, you don't need, you can, I think all these here are options, you just need the array name. You don't need, yeah. So you only need, so you got your last name, that's it becomes the prompt, and here's the prompt's position. So you can put it wherever you want on the screen, row and column. So I, a lot of times, when I've used it before in our office, I'll put it right over top of my field so that it looks like if they're typing in the field, in reality, they're just typing down a list box and it's showing it there. What controls the width of the data entry field? The, the, the field that you're listing on? I would, ima I would imagine it's the attributes of your array. Would you, is that correct, Logan? Uh, what was the question? The width of the field that would be you're yeah. typing into, that's it from based on the attributes of the array. Yeah. Uh, correct, it would be the same as the longest element in the array. Longest element. Okay. So, but, but for drop downs, this might be, if you don't want to take and make all a bunch of text files, you might be able to just dump it in an array and then be able to do spin it out that way, or type down to it. It's more powerful than that VR. And we use that WBL, I browse lookup, and then we 
Correct. Do it. Historically, this is a little more powerful. It is, because you can't type it. Today, anyway, you can't type down in the browser. But the array doesn't scroll, true? No, it scrolls. I, I, yeah, it, it types down. As you know, <coughs> when I did that. I mean, if you it. have more than fit on the screen in a select box. Oh, yeah, it, it works just like a list box. So if you have a Z word at the end of the list, but it's not on the screen, and you type a Z, it's going to switch the list. Yeah, I'll jump all the way to the Zs. Okay. Now, obviously, you got to make sure you don't over, if you're going to do a file profile and stick them in an array, you got to make sure that the array can handle what you're going to stick in it. But you're going to give us dynamic array length someday. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that would be nice. <laughs> I'm sorry, where's that wish list <laughs> The way I just thought, for this example, and I just whipped this up just in the back of the, uh, the room here just a few minutes ago, so it's not perfect in every, any, uh, you know, the imagination of it. But I, I defined this array as a thousand elements to so, and I did not do like the checking to, you know, make sure that they don't exceed it. And then I do my lookup and just do a um, increment one, and then stuff it in my array, and doing the loop of the gut next. And then just show the select box. So, sure, I can go back to that. So, here, I, now I use the app when browse lookup, so that's why it's tied to my F6 key instead of actually a browse key, so I tied it to a function key. And so when I type, uh, Smith seems like the natural one here because it's after, or any of them. If I do my S, M, uh, I, T, H. You notice that um, the blue part here is filling in. That is not destroying the underlying value at that point until I hit enter. It just looks like it's over. What controlled the color? The blue, the fact that it turned blue? Actually, I'm not sure. I, I would assume that's the default colors that I have, and so therefore they're getting the same colors as right here, because that's my default color. <coughs> Do you have any idea, Logan, why that color is that way? Actually, if you make the screen not mono, it'll all be blue, and you couldn't tell the difference. <laughs> yeah, you could make it blue, and then, it, yeah, you wouldn't be able to, but it, for those who like to paint, He says it's just some kind of attribute. It's a, I, I, you can probably put the attribute in the prompt. Can you do, I was going to say, can you do like a backslash that bar, whatever the, the color I, I I haven't done it, but I don't see why you can because it's just the prompt. Yeah. So is yeah. it case sensitive? So if you have a lowercase smith? You, you have that option where there's a little discussion among that, us when we first created this, somebody said, well, it should always just be non-case sensitive, and I'm like, us Unix guys, it makes a difference. We do like case sens insensitivity, because, or sensitivity, because we have the same names in lower and uppercase letters sometimes. So I think by default, it goes with whatever the OS's normal default would be. So Unix, for example, and Linux, is going to be case sensitive, whereas the DOS world, they, they don't care. However, there's an optional flag to change it to what you want it to be. So you can have a case insensitive for a Unix and type down, and I'll just go to that one. Yes, sir. Yeah, I was going to say, I would assume that in Unix it's not case sensitive because when you do comparisons and you want to check for that, you got to use the compare. So upper and lower case don't show up. It's not case value. sensitive in the na in the nature of comparisons, but it is for the typing down here. It is. So you might see it. Yeah, you see this. This, this, this is the same behavior that Forms has too. You, if you're in Unix, you'll notice your capital. If you do this, we used yeah. to do this for our stuff. We make our our forms before they had it eliminate. We make our forms capital letters for the first letter. And then they would put them at the beginning of the list for everybody, and then all the reports then were at the end of the list until we were able to remove them now. 
like in all the searches and all the lookups, it's not case sensitive. But in this, in, in the list box or show box, it is. This list box, you have the option to make it case sensitive or not, but by default, it goes with whatever the OS would sense it to be. By the way, if you like the idea of dynamic length variables, only four people have voted on it. <laughs> <laughs> I submitted a long time. Best lobbying. Best lobbying. Best is, lobbying. is that that hard to do, you think? I think they're all from his company. all from him in the last four No, I was going to post it, and I'm like, wait, I already did. There's been the discussion of that. It's, it's a bit more involved. It's just, yeah. It's been in there since 2002. <laughs> I don't know. I'm kidding. <laughs> 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 what did you say, man? Yeah, you might vote in all of your I do pay for USB though, so that should give me priority. <laughs> Which version? Chris. Yes, sir. If you back finger the name and then backspace or whatever, will it sort of still pick up and go? Let me. I think I was messing with it. And it might have been fixed or whatever. Uh, so if I, you said if I want the, oh, the arrows still work. So like yeah, if I type Smith and I up arrow, yeah, that does. Oh, okay. And you notice it wiped out the value there. So, um, now if you're saying backspace, back, back, no, it's not going back. Yeah, go one more, one more. Go one, one more. more. Oh, it's still yep. and it, and it's now, now, now like type, uh, yeah, type bell. Okay, it picks it up anyway. Well, that's, that's good enough. Yeah, that, that I'm not sure though, like if you did this though. Oh, it just wipes it and then you have to tighten. So. And if you want to get out without doing anything. Control C. <coughs> or what it, do, delete, whatever you have to do. Yeah, that's so, yeah, now, even though that was a multiple column, you can, like I said, we have rows and columns. You could say, I only want a single column and make that a long drop down so it looks just like a drop down with just single names and you're typing down to it. Okay. Hey, I spent a bit of time taking on through the, the, an example of the old um, file pro, good old tutorial file. Hey Chris. Yes. Can you change your menu color? From blue? No, no. Make it blue so that green, I can't get it on the video. So. All right. Let me go. Down. Just too blinding. All right. If you don't know, these are where you get your colors from to change your individual items. You got all these different variables. So, no. We'll go to the yeah. All right. Yeah, that should be a contest you have one day for a customer with the ugliest combination of colors. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, we, that, that is amazing. And with the advent of GI, if you leave the um, selection option for the end user to change the colors, I am amazed at the colors we get. Yeah. Can you update uh, pop up normal, make it a little bit easier to see? Y'all <laughs> are <No>, monochrome? <laughs> hey, Tom, We're going back to terminals, folks. <laughs> Which one you want changed? Pop up, pop up normal. All right. The only problem I see is that we're not going to see any layers in this because they're all going to look smashed together in the same colors. You could have made it red. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, well, I guess I might as well, well, while we're here talking about colors. <laughs> um, <laughs> tell you, show you here, you guys have 18 foreground and background colors in the new GI. Now, um, I don't know if you can see much attribute difference here <laughs> on the, on the um, overhead projector, but you, you can, and then, and, and, like as Tim said, you're able to adjust those 
and GI all 16 of those and then be able to say, oh, I want that to be hidden or whatever for the weird colored combinations. Or pick any of 65,000. Yeah, and in that sense, with GI, you can translate these to any color. Now, that always seems to be an issue with people. Do you have that hard problem with your customers? They can never grasp changing colors. I don't let them. <laughs> I mean, we, we, we have enough fighting in the office between Glenn, who only wants to use white and gray, me, who likes to add light blue and red, and Gene. Are we recording this? I'm sorry, Gene. Yes. Who likes to use carnival colors, and it, everything has got a different color on the screen, so every zone's got a different color. So we, 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 we fight internally. So the last thing I'm going to do is let the customer pay me. The themes thing lets the customer pick it, but within reason. But you, yeah, you end up choosing what his default is at that point. Okay. Now, just to give you an idea what those colors look like, here they are in the web browser, the same color. I made them a little more general than the uh, as the default colors and file pros bright crisp ones. So they're readable. So you did do some translation. Yeah, but this is how it is out of box. I'm not, so you guys didn't have to worry about it. 